In our day-to-day -day lives, we from time to time experience situations which make us lose confidence in ourselves. It might happen that you no longer believe in what you can do, or you may do something, yet don't believe if it is good enough or worthy. In all of these cases, we end up under a common umbrella of doubting ourselves and hence experiencing self-doubt. Well, to other people, it can get as intense as to them feeling like imposters, where a person feels that they don't deserve their accomplishments despite the presence of evidence that they actually do. And as a result, this person keeps living with the fear of being exposed as a fraud. Um, this condition, as psychologists term it, is known as imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome can happen in different forms and can be triggered by different situations or happen as the consequence of an event or a failure to meet expectations on a particular task. And when it happens, we get in our heads and tend to offset our achievements with this fear of being exposed as a fraud. Well, we undermine the efforts that we had put in before to get where we are at that particular moment and deny ourselves of any positive compliments that come to us and may be associated with that particular thing. And this happens naturally because at that point, there is our inner self which is trying to convince us that our accomplishments are not as good as we thought they were. Or sometimes it happens that we just don't want to boost ourselves, um, which is totally okay, but we're supposed to be careful for there is a very thin line between being considerate and negatively impacting ourselves, which in most cases is what we usually do. So talking of self-doubt, as I said, it comes naturally. So it is important to navigate through such a feeling when it happens to you, embrace it positively and grow through that particular experience, whatever it may be that got you there in the first place. Um, when I finished high school, I got an opportunity to intern at an organization which was sponsoring my application process for the universities to the United States. And at the same time, I was recognized by the National Examination Council of Tanzania for an outstanding academic performance in both ordinary and advanced secondary levels for I was in top 10 nationalized in both of them. So during, thank you. During my internship, um, I was tutoring students in math and science um, preparing myself for my standardized tests, did a number of them, and sent my applications to a number of colleges. Contrary to my expectations, I couldn't get admission to any of the universities that I had applied to. <laughs> well, just like most A students, this experience totally disturbed me. I couldn't help at that point but thought, maybe my academic excellence was not as good as I thought it was, or at least as how others had put it, and I was doubting myself for the very same thing that I was already recognized to be among the best in at a national level. Well, I felt like a disappointment, not only to myself, but to everyone who had helped me through the process and I started doubting myself in so many things thereafter. You see, um, when things don't go as planned, the thoughts that make our minds unsettled usually creep in. And these thoughts, they are usually full of negativity. Once we tend to dwell on them, they don't help us a thing, but rather lead us to getting stuck in a loop. And the worst thing is that 
if we're at a point where self-doubt has shattered our minds, um, we tend not to see progress in so many things that we do that we undermine and underestimate ourselves because of this one little thing that we have allowed in us. And it becomes like a seed which is bearing rotten fruits such that even if there are good ones, they'll still be seen as bad. So it is important to know how to deal with this feeling that can largely impact us and mostly negatively once we allow it to take a hold of us. But one important thing to realize is that you may not have control of what happens to you, but you can control your reactions towards it, which will eventually change its effects upon you. So through my experience and all that came with it, um, I learned two things. That is embracing change and choosing growth no matter how hard it may seem. And though external factors can help you overcome the feelings of self-doubt, the energy that comes from within is very, very important. So if you ask me, I'll say it begins with oneself. So when I failed to get admission to the US universities, despite being an A student, um, it took some time until I got back on my feet and managed to move on with life in a constructive way. In that process, there are things that I did and drank that helped me overcome the feelings of self-doubt and the moment that I felt like an imposter. And these things is what I want to share with you today. So well, first of them is through a moment of reflection. Well, it is very, very important to take some time, reflect on your life, and process what you go through. As for me, when I joined the University of Dar es Salaam, after missing on an opportunity to go to the United States, um, I was awarded the University of Dar es Salaam Merit Scholarship, which was a scholarship opportunity awarded to me entirely on the basis of my academic performance, which at that moment was the very same thing that I was doubting myself if I was really good at. So at first, I told myself I was just lucky, but with time, I realized that the opportunity was actually eye-opening. And slowly, I started questioning myself if it was really luck or otherwise. And it was during this time that I learned of cognitive distortions which refer to the thoughts that cause inaccurate perception of reality. And on my side, I experienced what they call filtering and paralyzed thinking because my thoughts were entirely focused on the negative side of the situation. And one of the ways that psychologists use to handle cognitive distortions is through a cognitive behavior therapy. So cognitive behavior therapy, um, this is a process which focuses on altering and challenging the thoughts that have a negative impact on our emotions and behaviors into positive ones. And one of the tools for cognitive behavior therapy is journaling. Um, I remember during that time I used to write down my frustrations every time it got overwhelming, and my journaling level increased significantly. Well, the more you take time and process what you go through, the lesser you start taking on the negative side, but slowly start seeing the positive side of it. As for me, I realized that the internship opportunity not only exposed me to new learning techniques, but it gave me an opportunity to make so many great friends and improve my communication skills. And the more you think about what you go through, you come to realize that your situation is not even as bad as you think it is. 
Though it is not easy at the beginning, so I would say consistency is the key. So it is better to constantly process what you go through instead of bottling feelings up. Because if you master the skill of getting rid of your negative thoughts and to start thinking positively about yourself, that is one step towards progress. The second thing that helped me is through acceptance and adaptability. Well, sometimes we fail to accept a change that has occurred or the fact that things didn't go as planned. As for me, I couldn't get to the universities that I wanted to go to, but instead, I got an opportunity to a university in the country that also awarded me a scholarship. And I realized that embracing the fact that I was the student at the University of Dar es Salaam was necessary for that was my situation at a time. And it wouldn't do me any good if I also messed up things over there. So first semester was hard as compared to the rest of the semesters. But I was determined to get better every single day. So it is important to see how you navigate through what you go through, be it a task that you need to accomplish, a project, a problem, or whatever is it that got you into doubting yourself from the very beginning. Meanwhile, it is important to, straight, to stay true to yourself while adapting and embracing a positive mindset. Because with acceptance and adaptability, they'll give you the confidence that you need to keep moving. Um, the third and last thing is through a good support system. Well, our surroundings have an influence on how we deal with things that are happening to us or how we deal with situations that we are going through. And this includes family, um, friends, parents, teachers, partners, and the like. And while we are supposed to be our own first cheerleaders, we usually tend to be our own first critics. Though it is not healthy for it to be like that. When we are doubting ourselves, it is even possible to see that the positive compliments from other people, it is as if they are mocking us while they are not. And at that moment, for me, it was as if not getting to the universities that I wanted to go to, a total disaster, um, I was constantly reminded that it was not the end of the world by the people around me in so many different ways with and without their knowledge. Um, sometimes, when you're doubting ourselves, these words of affirmation from other people may be that gentle reminder that we need for us to keep striving for growth. Though it is also possible that there is too much negativity around you and it is making your discovery process harder, but the inner courage and determination is the key to it all. And as I said before, it begins with oneself. So, it is very, very possible that you have felt like an imposter at some point in your life. Well, the good news is you're not alone. Research shows that at about 70% of the people that you know have felt like imposters at some point in their lives. And those studies show that imposter syndrome is common among women, marginalized groups, and very strangely, among high achievers. Well, you do not necessarily have to be among these groups for you to experience the moments of self-doubt. It can happen to anyone, at any time, at any point in life, so long as you're responsible for doing something or you're expected to do something. Um, there is an American science author and professor called Adam Grant. 
in his book named Think Again, um, he points out that even though feeling like an imposter is typically viewed as a bad thing, well, imposter syndrome can be that necessary thing that we need for our growth. And this is entirely because when we are feeling like imposters, that feeling never makes us think that we know it's all. And as a result, there is always a chance for growth in us. So, growth is a process and it cannot happen overnight, but it can be achieved by adopting to good practices. So it is very important to embrace these fears because they can motivate us to work harder, smarter, and even make us better learners. Um, moment of reflection through journaling worked for me, but writing may not be your thing. Even though it is also possible that going to the beach comes your nerves down, or spending time with your family, um, serving your community, worshiping, or whatever is it that gives you peace when in chaos. Because the goal here is for you to do something that will not only remind you of how good you are, but also give you that peace that you need at that moment. So I chose acceptance of a feeling like a disappointment, and it was then possible for me to adapt to my college environment, which was not as how I had imagined it to be. Um, at first, adjusting was hard, but it got better with time, and I eventually graduated with honors and getting recognized as the best graduating electrical engineering student in my graduation year. And if you had asked me when I was starting uni, I wouldn't have thought if that was possible because somehow I lost the confidence in me that I could actually accomplish something. But here I am, standing in front of you here today, a registered graduate electrical engineer and a scholarship already for a master's degree at the University of Dar es Salaam. And I am so excited about, about my next step as I start my career in energy and engineering, and I am positive that it is going to be nothing short of an inspiration. So, working on a transformative journey from doubting yourself to realizing the great potential in you may not seem easy. Well, of course it isn't, but it is the best mission to embark on because so many great things come with it. And in the process, you never stop learning because in the soil of self-discovery, the seeds of personal growth flourish, yielding the fruits of a fulfilling journey. Thank you very much. <laughs>